First of all, let me thank you for choosing a new Jazz or Jazz Crossstar as your next new vehicle. In this video, we're going to look at the features and the technology that both of these cars share so that we can tailor them to exactly what you would like them to do for your car and you can start enjoying it from day one. Now, we are going to focus on using this car in the video. Um, this is an EX grade, so not all Jazzy's benefit from every single feature we're going to look at here, but we'll take a look round and make sure we get the very most out of it for you. So, please join me as we take a look at the Honda Jazz. When it comes to unlocking and locking your car, there are a couple of ways you can do it. I'll show you both of those. So first of all, we can use the remote and we can press the unlock button and it will put the, uh, the guide me home lights on. It will wind the door mirrors out and of course, we're able to open the door. When it comes to locking, we press the top button and it will lock the car and fold the door mirrors in for us automatically. However, there is a second way we can do this by putting the key in our pocket, handbag, jacket, bag, wherever, we can use the keyless system. So as long as we're in proximity of the car, all we need to do is put our hand behind the door handle, you'll hear it unlock the car, and now I can open the car and of course the door mirror unwinds. When it comes to locking the car using the same system, there are three little uh, ridges on top of the door handle. All we need to do is make contact with those. So I'll show you that. We shut the door. It's locked. I can check it if I want to, to make sure that the door is actually locked. But after a few seconds have passed, as soon as we put our hand in again, of course, it will unlock the car for us. Now, if you ever find yourself in a position where the battery in your remote has gone flat, all you would do, slide that little catch over, take out the blade inside the key, pop it into the traditional lock, which is on the, the driver's side door handle, and you can get into the car. Now, of course, if your battery in your remote is flat, it's not going to allow you to start the car until you put this over the top of the power button, which will energize this, so you can then press the power button, drive on, continue your journey, and go to your local Honda dealer and get a new battery in your remote. So to start your jazz, all you need to do is put your foot on the foot brake, press the power button, and the car is ready to drive. Now, sometimes the petrol engine will fire up, sometimes it'll be in EV mode. That's going to depend on the state of charge of your battery and also the temperature of the car and outside. So when you're ready to drive, you'll see uh, a little symbol of a green car in the, the dashboard with arrows underneath it, then you're ready to select your drive. So we're in P for park at the moment, so we press the little lever just at the front of the gear shift into the reverse, through N for neutral and then into D for drive and we're good to go. There is another little uh, section on here for which is B mode. So we pull the little lever at the front of the gear stick and that allows us to go into B mode which is for brake. So this is when you come off the accelerator, the car will actually slow down more than if you were in D mode. So this is useful to, to recapture some extra uh, energy and also it gives more of like an engine brake feel um, because in D mode you're not going to get any engine braking because the engine's not connected to the road wheels. Now my foot is on the foot brake and I can do a number of things to release the parking brake. Because my foot's on the foot brake I can just push it down, um, apply it of course like that. Um, if my foot wasn't on the, the foot brake, but I put it into to D and my seat belt's on, it will automatically release for me. Another great feature that we have on Jazz and Jazz Crossstar is brake hold. So when we press this to set it, what it does is when we've been driving and we come to zero miles an hour by using uh, foot brake, the car will hold on the brake pressure for me. It's like the car putting its pressure on the brake pedal. So that means I don't have to at uh, junctions or if I'm queuing up at traffic, put the parking brake on because the car is gonna keep me stationary until I select either reverse or drive or B to actually continue my journey. So the stalks behind the steering wheel, indicators on the left, and we have our wipers on the right. 
So if you just want to uh, make an overtake maneuver and you just want three flashes, you just literally push the indicator stalk until you feel a little bit of resistance and it'll give you three flashes. If you want to indicate for a longer duration, you go past that point and it will keep indicating until either you cancel or the steering lock will cancel it because you've made your maneuver. Um, then on the uh, stalk itself, we have the ability to uh, select the lighting. So the default is the auto position. If you want to force them off, you'd rotate it uh, clockwise towards you. Um, if you want fixed side lights or fixed uh, dip beam, you would rotate it anti-clockwise. To go uh, full beam, you would push it away from you. And obviously that will now bring us back to the dip position. And if you just want to give that little flash of the lights to let somebody know that you're there, you would pull that towards you. Now that the headlights are on, we can rotate the fog lights for the front and for the rear on the, the same stalk. So everything to do with lighting, whether it's indicators, front lights, fog lights, fog lights at the rear, is all on here. So I'll turn those off. And then on the right hand side, we have our wipers. Now this car has automatic um, rain sensing wipers. So we have controls of one push up would give a mist of the windscreen, just one uh, little uh, wipe of the screen. Next position down is off, then pulling that down one position puts it into auto. Now you can control um, how sensitive these are because the rain sensor is looking for droplets of water on the windscreen and you can rotate this little dial for less or more sensitivity depending what you want. And if you want it in a fixed position, you just push it down one or two positions more. I'll turn them off. Um, on the end of this, we have another uh, sort of uh, control for the rear wiper. So clockwise looking at it end on would put the rear wiper into intermittent. One further push would put it on constantly at the back. And if I pushed it even further, that would give a uh, jet of water to the, um, the rear screen. If I wanted a jet of water for the front screen, I would literally pull that stalk towards me. To adjust the, uh, the door mirrors, literally by my right hand here, I've got a little slider, so push it towards R for the right hand mirror, then this little uh, circular sort of uh, control will allow me to get the angle exactly right for my visibility, and then I'd push it over to the L position to do the passenger side. If I want to fold the door mirrors in while I'm inside the car, I can push the button, it'll fold the door mirrors in for me, but of course, when I lock the car, it will automatically do that and then wind them out for me as well. Just below the adjustment for the door mirrors, we have the unlock and lock button for the doors. So if I'm driving along and I feel the need to, to make sure nobody can get in to the car, I can just press the button, it will lock all the doors, nobody can get in, and obviously unlock is the other way. Below that, we have the ability to isolate the other three window switches. So with the amber light on there, there's only me that can operate the entirety of the windows within the car. When the amber light's not on, everybody can adjust their individual windows. And remember, we've got one touch system on here, so we can, if we want to, get to the first point of resistance, and as soon as we release it, that's where the window will stay. But if we want to go for the one touch system, past that point of resistance and it will fully close or fully open the window for me. So to keep you at the optimum temperature inside, all our controls are pretty much in the center of the car. So if I just work uh, left to right, we have, because this is the EX grade, we have the heated seats, we have three stages there. I'll just turn that back off again. Then working across, we have the on off button in the center for the actual fan speed. And of course we can increase or decrease that. So air conditioning, we can turn on or off, which is totally separate to the on off button here because that's for your fan speed. Then we have recirculate. So if you just want to recirculate the air inside your cabin, that will be amber illumination on there. If you want air from outside to come into the cabin, there'll be no amber light. Then centrally here we have um, what mode uh, we want it in. So whether we want it just on our feet, feet and windscreen, or we can roll just face or face and feet. We have those options there. Uh, next along we have one that just says front. 
what this will do, it will maximise the defogging of the front screen. So it will, I'll just turn it down, um, but what it will do, it will put a uh, high fan speed with the aircon on to actually demist the inside of your screen for you. Next one along has uh, rear written on it, and that is for heating the rear screen and also the door mirrors. So off that one button, it will do both door mirrors and the rear screen for you. We turn that one off. Then we have our temperature control as a uh, dial here, so we can have whatever temperature we choose. And if we want the car to actually do the best job at keeping us at that temperature, and it works out what the fan speed should be, where the air needs to come out of, literally just press auto and it will do the very best job for you and of course the last one over here is my heated seats and again we have three stages just like the passenger has now not to do with your sort of comfort in the car but in the same sort of area just to point out for you should you need it that's where your hazard warning light switch is Now to keep that versatility and practicality, we know Jazz has got cup holders in the centre, in the door pockets and by the, uh, the air vents to keep them climate controlled. Um, but from a practicality point of view when it comes to storage, we've got our traditional glove box down here and we've also got the additional glove box just above it, making sure we've got plenty of places to keep those odds and ends. So to get your seat right, to make sure that you're comfortable driving, but importantly safe as well, we need to make sure that we can get the, the right adjustment, that we can fully depress the pedals. Um, then we'd look at adjusting the height. So I'll raise this up a little bit. I've got a lever just by my, my right hand down here to, to pump the seat up on the level. Then I'd look at the recline. So I can push that backwards or bring it up just to make sure we get it in exactly the right position for me. That feels nice and comfortable. Then I'd look at my steering wheel. So bridge just that down there. We just get that to where we think it's right, pull the lever up, and yeah, that feels nice and comfortable. And now the final thing would be the head restraint. So that's too much of a gap. What we need to make sure is that the lumpy part of the back of my head is where the head restraint would come into contact with. So I'm just gonna raise that up a couple of clicks, but that's still too much, so I can put the recline adjustment on there so that it's not touching my head but it's very close and that would limit any movement should there be an impact. So if I was driving this after somebody else had set it for themselves there's a little button on the side so I just press that to reset it and push the head restraint down to start all over again and make sure we get it exactly right for every driver. Now that we've got our seat and our steering wheel set up, the final thing is our seat belt. So we can adjust the height of where it comes out of the B pillar. And if this is our shoulder, we don't want the seat belt coming over the top of it and we don't want it too sharp an angle either. So we just make it nice and comfortable so that it's safe. Now I'm going to raise that up a couple of notches and that feels and looks perfect. To activate or deactivate your parking sensors, just by my right knee, there's a little button with P on it. And when I press that, it will illuminate with a green light, meaning they're on. I also get confirmation momentarily on the meters in front of me. And as and when I want to turn it off, press that same button again, the green light goes out and I know I've turned my parking sensors off. While we're in this kind of area, one final thing on here is just to talk about where the horn is. Okay, so the first one on our menu is the hybrid menu. We press the button for home, we push the thumb wheel and it will show us what kind of mode we're in, whether we're in full EV, taking energy from just the battery, hybrid, where we've got the petrol engine running as well, or in engine drive, where the engine is physically driving the electric motors, the uh, road wheels. Uh, next one down, we have our instantaneous fuel economy. We also have our trip meter on there. We can scroll between trip A and trip B. And if you want to reset that, you just push the thumb wheel, scroll onto reset and push that button again. Next one down is our last three trips. So we can see how we've been driving or whoever had the car before us, how they were driving. 
Next one down will give us again some averages about driving. So how long this driving journey is, what our average speed has been since we last reset it. We go back onto the home button again. Next one down will be music. If we're playing something through CarPlay or the radio, we could access it there. Next one down is for the mobile phone. So when we scroll onto that one, we press the home button onto the phone and we can see that there's a phone connected here. So we could access the details there. Let's go down one and that will give us our satellite navigation turn by turn signals. So you will get your map in the connect screen to the left, but actually you'll get your turn by turn signals straight in front of you. Next one down is our speed alarms. So you could have these set at 30 or 50 as is there. They've got a line through them, so this isn't going to activate on this particular car, but I could uh, just go into one of those. Um, I'll go into the top one, and this will now activate every time I go over 30 miles an hour. It will give me a little bong, now I've changed that setting. Next one down is information about the seatbelt. Yes, we're in a five-seater car, and there's only the driver got their seatbelt on. That's perfectly okay, there's only me in here. Then we have part of our sensing features. So quite easily, I could turn off my lane departure warning, uh, my blind spot information or my collision mitigation braking system simply by scrolling through and pushing that button. I'm going to leave those all on. I want to be as safe as possible. The final icon on here gives us the ability to tailor which icons we'll see as we scroll through. At the moment they're all on there, but if you have three or four favorites and you don't really use any others, you can just deselect those, making it even easier to access what you want when you want it. Now on the right hand side of the steering wheel we have a few functions here to do with our speed limiters, our intelligent adaptive cruise control and also lane keeping assist system. Not to mention our heated steering wheel on this particular grade. So from the top we have a button with LIM written on it. As I scroll through that will change between LIM, LIM with what looks like a traffic sign in front of it and then a speedo with the car in front of it. LIM when I set a speed, that is the speed limit of the car. I will not be able to accelerate past that speed, so it's really good for a you know, peace of mind. If I select the one that has this traffic sign and LIM next to it, this is going to take information that the camera's seen of the road sign, so in a 60 mile an hour zone, it would then automatically limit me and my acceleration up to 60 miles an hour. With both of those features, if you need to accelerate past that for a safety reason, if you go full throttle, you will override the system because you are in control of this. These are assistance systems. And the final one that looks like a speedo with a car in front of it is intelligent adaptive cruise control. So this is where we take cruise control and make it usable in modern traffic. So rather than it just being a set speed and not adapting at all, what we do, we can uh, press our adaptive cruise control, we then set the speed and it will go to the speed we're traveling at, or we can actually, if we're doing 30 miles an hour but we're in a 60, we can set it and use the plus button to take our target speed up to 60. And of course, as we've mentioned in previous videos, if there's a car in front doing 50, it will reduce our speed to mirror the slower speed of the car in front, and we can adjust the gap between ourselves and the car in front by time with this little button down here. So we have four different levels of time between us, like a one and a half or two second gap, etc. So once we've set our intelligent adaptive cruise control, we could also, if we wanted to, set our lane keeping assist system. That's the button just to the right, which will look for the painted lines on the road and put in those tiny little movements of steering that we don't realize perhaps we're doing to reduce driver fatigue. So you'll need to be going at sort of dual carriageway motorway speeds for this to operate. So above the sort of 45 miles an hour, there or thereabouts, it would uh, operate for you. Now from a driver's point of view, you have plenty of relevant, easy to read information straight in front of you. So I'll just take you through what we've got. On the right hand side, because we're stationary, we have the, uh, the sign to tell us that the parking brake is still on. Then we have our fuel gauge for our petrol tank. And like all Hondas, just next to the sign for the fuel pump, there's a little tiny um, arrow pointing leftwards. 
just to indicate that your fuel filler flap is on the left hand side of the vehicle, making it nice and easy to remember which side of the pump to pull up to. Then as we move along, we can see we have the green car with the green arrow underneath it, so we're ready to drive, once we've selected drive of course. Above it, it's telling us we're in EV mode at the moment, so the car will be ready to drive off in pure electric vehicle mode. Next to that, the last traffic sign that this car saw was one of 70 miles an hour. So on the approach into here, that was what it saw. So of course, when we drive out of here, we're going to be on the same road. Um, just below that, we have the time. We do have a little orange uh, information icon on there. That's because there is a passenger door open. So it's saying it's, it's an amber notification. So take caution. There is something you should take a look at before you drive off, which is telling us is the door. Then uh, underneath is the time. To the left of that is the mileage for this particular car. Then we have the icon in the center telling us that the door is open. Above that is the speed. So top left, we have our P symbol because we're in park at the moment. Of course, when you select D or B for driving forwards, that would change accordingly. Underneath that, we have our little sensing icon that tells us if we've got our blind spot information um, on the EX grade, if we have our lane departure warning, those kind of features um, active. Below that is the external temperature, and of course we have our home button as we can scroll through some of the features we mentioned earlier. And on the left hand side, we have the state of charge of our high voltage battery, which in this case is just about three quarters charged. For all jazzes that come with the, uh, the nine inch infotainment screen, we call this Connect, this is how you would operate it. So we have three screens on here, and we can see things like our FM radio, Bluetooth audio, we have smartphone connection, that will change what it looks like once we've connected either an Android phone or an iPhone, we'll show you that in a moment. Um, we have general settings, vehicle settings, uh, digital radio, AM radio if you wish, uh, information on trip computer, all really easy to go through. At your own leisure, of course, you can, uh, you can download the owner's manual and read through that as well. What we'll do though, we'll just go to the, the first page and get a phone connected. Now, if you have a smartphone, the easiest way is just go into smartphone connection. If you don't have a smartphone, but it does have Bluetooth, you'd press the phone button and it would be a very similar uh, process. So, smartphone connection, and it will say, connect a new device. So we'll connect onto a new device, and I need to go into my settings. So I'll go into settings, into Bluetooth, and pops up Honda HFT. So I press that on my phone. There's a code on there. It matches the one that's come up on my screen. Do I want to allow it? Yes, I do. So in a moment when they've paired up together, they've made that connection, then it asks me, would I like to enable Apple CarPlay? Yes, I would. And of course, this is wireless Apple CarPlay as well. It's fantastic. Should be all the settings done on here. Maybe one more permission in a moment. Yep, use CarPlay. There we go. And it's completing the pairing. So now if I just pop my phone um, out of the way there, when we go back to the home screen, you will notice we go back to the home screen, it now no longer says uh, smartphone connection, it says Apple CarPlay. If I had an Android phone, it would have to be uh, connected into a USB connection and it would say uh, Android Auto. But now I'm into CarPlay, it's really easy. So we have my most recently used um, features on there, uh, my most recently used apps. I can see my location. If I go to my home screen, it looks just like my phone. So if I want to make a call, I can do it here. I could use Siri as well. I've got my own maps as well as the maps that are on the, um, the Connect system. If I swipe over there, I've got my various music, my Waze, um, WhatsApp, whatever it might be. So I can go home from there, but that is the connection. That's literally a couple of presses on there. I can now make and receive phone calls and I don't have to go in through my phone or my Bluetooth. It's actually made that connection all in one press. If I want to use the radio, I just press FM. It'll bring that up for me. And if I want to see what radio stations are available, just press station list and it will bring them all up for me. If I want radio one, superb stuff. I can actually store that in by pressing and holding it, waiting for the beep, and that stored that in as a preset for me. So I can use my volume on here, or of course, on the steering wheel. I'll just turn that down a little bit. Um, along the bottom now, I can choose different inputs for my audio. So I'm gonna to go to DAB, Digital Audio Broadcasting. 
and to see what's available if I go to the ensemble list it puts it into different categories so I'm going to go for my uh, BBC stations this will tell me what's available if I wanted Radio 5 Live it'll tune in to that for me picks that all up which we've got on there and then to store it in I would just press and hold and it's stored in as another preset for me. So really easy to use. From the, the, uh, the home page there, we could have accessed DAB from here, uh, AM for amplitude modulation as well. So lots of things that you can discover as you actually own the car and get to grips with the car, but really easy to use from the get-go. So before we close the, uh, the rear doors, it's probably worth pointing out we have child locks on both rear doors and to activate them, all we do, we simply push that down and if we want to take them off, push that little lever back up again. When refueling your Jazz, the, uh, the car is unlocked, simply press the fuel flap, it will open, allow you to unscrew the, the cap storage position inside the flap so that when you're filling up it's not banging on the bodywork and of course when you come to screw it back in you can't over tighten it has a ratchet system on there then close the flap and you're good to go so when you've unlocked the car it's really easy to open the boot of the jazz and the jazz crossstar underneath the h badge is an electronic latch to release the tailgate so when we're in, we can see the cavernous boot and we have even more storage underneath this sort of uh, little uh, carpet section just at the back here for those odds and sods. Now, hopefully you never get a puncture, but if you do and you want to use your temporary repair kit, it's just behind here. That'll give you everything you need to repair that at the side of the road, or of course, you've got your roadside assistants who you can call up and we'll sort everything out for you. Now, in a moment, I'm going to walk around this side of the car and have a look at the magic seats and see how we'd fit the Isofix child safety seats in. But while we're at the back, it's worthwhile pointing out that the top tether points for those child seats are in the roof lining of the, um, the Jazz and the Jazz Crossstar. And now from here, we can actually see these little plastic buttons, but underneath those are the metal bars. Our Isofix child safety seats would click into and make them really safe and secure. But of course, these are magic seats. We love them. So from the top, we have the little lever. Seat goes down, completely flat, giving us really big boot space. And of course, we can do that with the passenger side as well. But of course, magic seats are much more than that. We can fold them up. We can even get into the car. And of course, we can do it on the passenger side as well. When it's in that position, that locks it into place so that we can carry whatever we need to in the back of the car. And to lower it down, the exact reverse. Release it, pop it into place, push it down, and it's ready for a rear seat passenger. For the maintenance items underneath the bonnet, first of all, we need to open the bonnet. So just by the driver's feet, there's a little lever to release the first catch on the bonnet. Then to release that one, we just slide our fingers across, pop up the, um, the bonnet stay so we can see underneath the bonnet. Now, first thing you're going to see that's different is we do have some orange insulation around the cables for the high voltage system of this hybrid. No need to touch those. All we need to concern ourselves with is topping up screen wash, just behind that we have the reservoir of coolant for the engine so of course you would check that when the engine is cool and if it's getting close to the minimum make sure you you top that up with genuine Honda coolant um, behind there we have brake fluid again same goes there if that's dropping down a little bit make sure we top that up with uh, Honda brake fluid checking the engine oil now we recommend that you do this every time you fill up with fuel so that way the engine's nice and warm you've parked it somewhere flat and by the time you've filled the car up actually the oil will have gone to the appropriate level if it's getting close to the minimum top it up again with the approved oil just by taking off the oil cap there pop it in making sure you go no higher than the maximum mark uh, moving over to this side of the car, we do have a separate reservoir of coolant here. This is for the power control unit and the hybrid side. Again, you can keep an eye on that, should be no movement in that at all. If it ever needs topping up, it will use the same coolant as the engine. 
Now we do have a 12 volt battery on the car. That is part of the system to enable you to uh, unlock the doors, uh, the, the lights will come on when uh, to welcome you to the car, but that will be charged up when driving from the high voltage battery at the back. So this little sticker here just gives an indication of the frequency we should be driving the car, which I think for everybody is going to be a lot more frequently than this says. What it's alluding to is that every three months you need to drive it for at least 30 minutes. So again, no issues there. So once we've checked everything under the bonnet, we'll close it down. So pop the stay back into its little holder and just let the weight of the bonnet close itself. Now, of course, other maintenance you'll want to do is making sure that the, the depth of the tread on your tyres is good and also that your tyre pressures are at the correct pressure for you and also for the, the occupants you've got in the car. Now, we have a deflation warning system and what that does, it actually looks at and calculates the pressure in the tyre by the rotational speed of the wheels. So this could tell you if the tyres were over or under inflated. So if you get a warning inside the car, don't automatically think you've got a puncture. It just could be a cold spell or a warm spell. So check the pressures, make sure there's no foreign objects in the tyres, because obviously if there is you need to get it replaced or repaired, but if you've established that actually there's nothing wrong there, we've readjusted the tyre pressures, I'll show you how to reset it inside the car. So now we're in the car, all we need to do is put the power on, the car will set itself up, and the connect screen will uh, bring us to our home page once we've um, selected start on there. Now from this main screen what we want to do is pick out vehicle settings just up there and another option we have here is the deflation warning system. So to reset it once we've checked that the pressures are okay and the tyres are in good condition we press calibrate that resets it and it's done. Thank you for watching the short video on Jazz and Jazz Crossstar so we can get the most out of the car for you. So I'm sure we've discovered some new features and how to set them up and also revisited some familiar ones. Now, in case there are some more specific detail questions that you have, please feel free to contact your dealer where they can go into that greater level of detail for those specific items. So, congratulations on your new purchase and we look forward to keeping in touch.